<laughs> that was so sweet. I love you so much. I love you too. You did a beautiful job. <laughs> a little for bird. Water on me. I want to congratulate the entire scale team in bringing this very important project to the state that it's in right now. And with that, we're moving forward to see that black sky. Spaceship One's triumphant first glide marks a major milestone for Rattan and the race for space. With Dave Thompson gone, Brian Binney and John Campbell oversee the propulsion program. So here we have uh, Space Step coming in first. The test itself went well, and we finally went to shut the motor down. Wouldn't shut down, we had a fire, couldn't get it to go out, and it was horrible. Contrast that with uh, EAC's first firing. It fired, it ran, it shut down, it was smooth, it um, was a good, solid rocket motor, and the contrast was enormous. Let's do it again. They were very different uh, in the way they approached things. The Space Dev crew come from a more big company aerospace background, more interested in the documentation and taking logical steps. And then what followed was quite interesting because the next four times out to bat, EAC couldn't get the motor to light. Okay, Somebody great. support this at the back. The tables now were really tilted in the opposite direction. EAC, which had enjoyed the misfortunes of Space Deb, getting off to a bad start, was now really having to scramble to play catch up. The final tests of the two rocket companies bring the competition to a close. Rattan sets up conference calls to announce his decision. Hello. Oh, hey. Who am I talking to? Everybody you know in Miami. Do we have the uh, Space Dev rocket development team there? You've got us hanging by a thread, Bert. Because both teams were so closely matched and since both have developed satisfactory motors, the process to select one of these vendors to enter the motor qualification and flight test phase was difficult. However, today, Scale is pleased to announce that it has awarded the contract for propulsion support for Spaceship One flight test phase to Space Dev San Diego. Yeah. 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 Onward and upward. Looking up. Way up. Comprehensive testing of Spaceship One continues with a series of glide flights. Each mission expands the envelope of the plane's known capabilities. Airplanes go so high and they go so fast and they go so slow. And every time you go higher or faster, you're doing something new. So that's an envelope expansion. There's always the possibility that something's going to happen unexpected. A heavy beast, huh? These envelope expansion flights will allow the three test pilots, Mike Melville, Pete Siebold, and Brian Binney, to explore this unique aircraft's ability to fly. Okay, release uh, on my count. Three, two, one. Mark. And good release. Clean release. Good release. There's about minus one, a uh, little bit of dust uh, over the top. Left rudder. Pete deploys the feather. Uh, feather is coming. As Spaceship One folds in half, a camera mounted in the right tail looks forward at the body of the plane. Okay, close both the arm and fire switches, Pete. The MCS is done. The feather performs flawlessly, allowing the plane to drop through the air just as Rattan imagined. The scaled composites unit mobile, affectionately dubbed Scum Truck, serves as mission control for the flights. From here, aerodynamicist Jim Tai monitors the status of the plane. My primary responsibility during this flight test portion of the program is to check data that we get from flight tests compared to what my predictions were and then see how they differ. Today, Mike Melville tests the predicted speed of a stall. A stall is when the air flowing over the wing no longer stays attached to the surface. It's not developing any lift anymore. And as soon as it stalls, you're not an airplane anymore, you're just a 2,000 pound lump falling out of the sky. 
carrying sandbags to simulate the weight of rocket fuel, Slowing. Mike Melville slows the plane. Okay, buffeting in the tail already. At night, there's a big pitch up. Big pitch up. He finds the tail of the plane suddenly dropping. Using nose trim down. Spaceship One has stopped flying. Okay, it departed at about uh, 85, maybe. To keep it from falling backwards, Mike rolls Spaceship One over. Understand you're under control. Negative. Say again. He's the part of the plane that's not under control. Jim Ty sees what has Mike trapped in a spin. He tells Doug, who relays it to Mike. Way out of trap, Mike. You need to come back on the roll trap. Thirty-three thousand under control. Wow, that was exciting. Are you under control? Hey, farm, we're under control. Gotcha. That's why we do flight tests because. When you design something as radical as the stuff Bert designs, it's not going to be straightforward. But it's disappointing because it's somewhat of a setback. We, we've got an aerodynamic problem, and we've got to fix that. I made a decision that would be made by any airplane designer, is that you really need some wind tunnel data. And I needed wind tunnel data right now. They can spend millions and months at a massive wind tunnel facility. We just go out and slam some stuff together and break out our super glue and go to town. Or they can use the Land Shark, mounting a full scale model of the tail of Spaceship One in front of a pickup truck. Jim Tai analyzes 25 different tail configurations in less than two weeks. Stabilizer at zero, zero Elevon, 55 knots. My very first airplane, the very big one, was developed on a wind tunnel mount up above a 1967 Dodge Dart station wagon. Landshark data reveals that the tail is too small for stable subsonic flight. We needed more tail area. As you can see here, we've actually added 16 inches on the elevator, the movable part of the control surface, and 16 inches on the fixed part of the tail. But he's nailed it. It's perfect. Spaceship One's next challenge will take it faster than the speed of sound. With a live motor bolted in place, the Scaled Composites team readies Spaceship One for its next big hurdle, rocket-powered flight. If all goes according to plan, this will be the first rattan craft to go faster than the speed of sound. It's definitely the riskiest venture that we've taken part in by far. We're trying to develop a man-rated rocket. We're going supersonic. It's a lot of new uh, territory that we've never been involved in. The first powered flight of Spaceship One will burn its hybrid rocket motor for 15 short seconds, thrusting pilot Brian Binney straight up and across the sound barrier. Good morning. Good morning. The upper level winds look pretty nice. Mission control. Airplane's ready to go. Let's get out. We really need to be uh, on our toes and, and alert. You got to be able to light that rocket motor and turn that corner and get through transonics and get supersonic and, and stay far enough ahead of the airplane that you can manage all the other devils that lurk in, in those regions. The big deal last time was trying to keep the toes warm, so I got some extra socks. And there's no heater, oh. and you're about three plies away from minus 60, minus 70 degrees Fahrenheit. At at altitude, so your toes are right at the pointy end of the, the vehicle and not getting much warmth. I need all the required equipment. What's really going to get you is the, the thrust. There's almost two G's worth of accelerating just due to the thrust alone, plus gravity because you're going straight up. All right, Brian, we'll see you when you get back. And this is one thing here. Lucky charm. I gave him a medal, Our Lady of Loretto. It's supposed to protect all eight.